Hello, good afternoon. So, as you've seen, I'm going to talk about car hacking. So, cars are more and more connected. We have different devices that can connect 4G networks within vehicles that allow us to have Wi-Fi or share content, contents. So, regarding security, we should also have some progress in this regard in order to provide security in this field. And this is what my presentation is about. The presentation is called From Angelina Jolie to Charlie Theron, and you will see why now. I'm coming from GMV. I'm not going to uh, give you a presentation about it because my company has a stand outside, so you can talk to them directly. But well, we used to have the mechanics we used to have were traditional mechanics, for example, these were the cars that we used to have, bef used to have before. My father had an Opel Kadett. When these type of vehicles um, stopped, stopped working, you went to the auto repair shop and he said, okay, the failure is here, you believed it, and it, that, that was it. So we had this type of mechanics. This was my mechanic. So mechanics basically did that. They, depending on the noise of the engine or things like that, he or she, I've also brought a version for you girls, don't worry. But just by listening to the engine, the mechanic could uh, see if the alternator was not working, if there was a problem with the brake, etc. But everything has evolved. And at the end of the 80s, the uh, people from Mercedes um, launched the Mercedes 300. This Mercedes was the first vehicle that introduced uh, CAN bus. Uh, technology, which is a network in th within the car that connects different gadgets that provide information. Uh, for example, this technology allows us to see if uh, there is a problem with our wheel in the vehicle or something like that. These things, in the end, are part of, our, of an interconnected uh, network that gives us information through a dashboard. And um, in the 80s, and the people from Mercedes invented that. Even, but it is true that in the 80s, people didn't talk that much about about cybersecurity. But well, what I was, what I was saying before, it is called an ECU. A EC, ECU is like a computer that uh, has different gadgets or uh, devices connected. It is not very complicated, but in the end, the, all these devices together are part of the network of the car. And nowadays, a car has about 80 ECUs inside it. So whenever uh, there is a problem, then the mechanic that is going to check our vehicle is going to connect to the vehicle and is going to see that there is a log of uh, different failures and he will be able to see if there is a wrong pressure somewhere and therefore the, we uh, enter into an emergency mode. So, well, we will see that later, but the problem with all these ECUs, control units, is that uh, the campus network, well, not now, but before, it was completely connected, like the first computer networks that we used to have. There was no type, any, no type, there was no type of segmentation or fragmentation. Nobody wanted to enter into a vehicle's network. If you wanted to enter into a vehicle's network, you had to be within the car. So there was not a type of different type of connectivity. So. We know now that this was not a good idea. So what Mercedes uh, came up with when they invented the canvas was not keeping a registry. So fantastic. In order for nobody to to know how something is working, they decided to not have a registry. But it is true that reverse engineering was not a thing back then. Right now, we are able to take all the canvas traffic and to uh, extract information in order to see what's happening. And we you, we know that a can bus, can bus is something similar to that. If you are in contact with ha car hacking, etc., I'm sure that you've seen this million of times. So every number that we are seeing there, well, means something. There is a failure control system, etc. We will see later some 
examples about it, about this. This is related to some vulnerabilities that we found out recently, vulnerabilities that have been there forever, but as uh, connected were, car not, were not connected before, had to be tackled within the car. And this is why I'm going to talk to you about Angelina Jolie. I don't know if you remember this uh, film, 60 Seconds from the 90s. Angelina Jolie was a car theft, as you can see here in the GIF. The picture with her uh, on the right, it's worthless, but I really like that picture. So she had like a device, and when uh, she pressed this button, the car started working because it bypassed the traditional system of the vehicle, and it um, communicated the vehicle that the signal that it was receiving, it was right, and that it could start working. So this is the way cars could be hacked before it, but we know that vehicles have evolved and we've moved through different types of cars. Also, uh, we know some people that um, know how to, for example, uh, tune the different cars. This is, for example, is my car. So well, to this car, you could do anything you wanted to. If you could connect to the canvas, which was under the wheel, you could do anything you wanted to. Uh, controlling the ECUs with a remote control, uh, making the engine blow more than, uh, than standard. And this had several consequences. Sometimes you could break something, because if you, for example, um, uh, moved the parameter too high, for example, the engine could stop working. But nowadays everything is a little bit clearer. And anyway, since the beginning of 2010, we've seen that some hacks started happening. And this is not something modern. Um, as you can see here, first attacks hap happened in 2010. In 2010, there were people already trying to access car networks. And the first attack that we've registered is one that happened to a rental company, we call rental company. They had a device, and if the client lost a vehicle or spent more time with the vehicle than the one in the agreement, they could block the car. But what happened is that they fired an employee that accessed the system from his house and could uh, block cars from his house for 24 hours. This happened in 2010, so a long time ago. And of course, um, we've seen more and more sophisticated attacks since, since that, until uh, the ones that we are having now, for um, example, in, in Tesla. Tesla core is based in Linux, and uh, some hackers have found uh, some, some uh, ways to access the Linux core of Tesla. They, some hackers have found a zero day and uh, have been able to access a Tesla and take it. So these type of attacks have evolved a lot. And the last, in the last years, we've had We've had very sophisticated attacks. For example, this one. This guy uh, knew that there was a uh, figured out that, for example, with a Tesla, you can uh, approach with your key and the car opens. You can also have your key in a cart, etc. And this person figured out that when you are close to a Tesla, there is a um, challenge response with the key. So with a laptop, this person could uh, find out the, this challenge response of the key, uh, and he, this person, in the end, once he had um, all this information in the, in the laptop, this person could look for the user of the owner of the car, and this person would approach the owner of the car with the laptop, and would send the challenge to the key, and the key the key fob uh, could uh, clone this response and open the car. So it was as simple as that. It, we didn't have a time stand that would change during time, nothing like that. It could last forever. You could attack the car, gather the response, and then a few days later, go and get it. 
Well, as uh, Tesla vehicles are connected to the Internet, once this attack was reported to Tesla, uh, the, uh, the attack could not affect other uh, type of, te of any other model of Tesla. But it can happen the same thing with other type of smart key fobs. I think I have a slide of that later. There is a relay station attack that, that does exactly that thing. Also, a more, more innovative attack happened in Germany. So there was an owner that went to see his car and he realized that there was a window broken. There was nothing left, uh, nothing else that had been stolen. Um, so the owner thought, okay, maybe I left my phone or they tried to steal my car, but they didn't have time. However, a few days ago, the he took the car to maintenance and realized that after the C pilar, which is this one here, the attackers, the thefts, had disassembled this pilar, which is quite easy to disassemble, and they had put in the connections to the solar panel a device connected. And as this network is a CAN bus network, with this small device, they were able to see where the car was at any time, and they could send, as Angelina Jolie, they could send a signal to the uh, control unit to take it. So they were positioning the car with a small pen drive. It was like a pen. And the owner would have never realized about this. Uh, he just realized it because he took uh, the car to the auto repair shop. So as you can see, attacks are more and more sophisticated every time. And how can you access the CAN bus? Well, so this is the first image that you have here. And before, under the wheel, you had a CAN bus connector with a special cable, and you could access this uh, CAN bus with a laptop. But now there are other different devices, devices like the ones you can see here, one with Wi-Fi, one with Bluetooth. So do, maybe you've seen in the news that there are companies that allow you to put a device in your vehicle in exchange of all this positioning data and you you are given uh, like small advantages like um, some additional services or a firewall for the vehicle etc so what what did we do we wanted to try all these things so we purchased everything we needed to simulate this behavior and we started buying garbage on eBay and the first thing we bought was this one this type of device and all the cables needed in order to try to simulate the moment in which the car starts working, which is not easy because the car needs to check hundreds of things before it starts working. This is from a Volkswagen Polo. We put this car to 150 miles per hour, but it wasn't enough for us. So we decided to buy a car. We bought a Seat Ateca. I'm here in this picture posing for you. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, cu I couldn't say the brand of the vehicle, but anyway, uh, we buy this type of car and we disassemble it and we try different attacks. And for example, in that image on the right, you can see an Ethernet adapter we connected to the charging ports. This is one of the ways we try to we used in order to try to access the network. And many interesting things happened through this network adapter. And we could only make this adapter to work here in this case. But anyway, I, I guess that at some point when they were installing the car, they left the driver set for that. But with that, you could obtain an Ethernet connection. You gave an IP to your computer, and you could capture all of the traffic there. But this means all of the traffic. I mean, you could not just the traffic of the Wi-Fi network. You could also try to do brute force to the infotainment system, which is based on a Linux uh, model. So, in the end, you could do hundreds of things just by connecting to this uh, USB port. So through the man manufacturer website, we published the, the different type of ECUs that there are on, there is on a car. Now this is more fragmented than uh, what we had before. 
And well, this is the gateway. This is the central unit through which everything happens. We have two different uh, central systems. The gateway, which is behind the vehicle, and all of the data also go through the info timer, which is the navigation system of the vehicle. When so the area where you are able to see your GPS, etc. So once you, we had this uh, image, we could try to access the car through different areas, for example, the USB, the gateway that gave access to everything, and so on. Now I'm going to show you some videos of things that we've tried. This is a bus off attack, which is what I've tell, told you before. Every ECU has a bit of mistakes or, or failures. When an ECU um, exceeds the number of uh, failures, which is eight, is disregarded completely. The rest of them can work, but not that one. So in this attack, we try to simulate uh, or try to inject, inject garbage to this ECU in order to fake that it is having a lot of mistakes. The car, the vehicle, uh, this regards this ECU and uh, we can uh, get rid of all of the ECUs that we want to. This, the, this was the ECU that was in control of the rev revolutions of the vehicle. So while we were injecting the mistakes, the, the failures, we tried to get control of it and we increased the number of revolutions of the car to the top, to the highest point. But in, in fact, the car was completely stopped, the engine was stopped. So when we stopped doing the attack, the vehicle could recover. One thing was, that was interesting here too is that consumption, what you, you can see there, 40.9, I mean I like running and accelerating and I like speed but 40.9 is a quite a high consumption rate. However, as the revolutions were the highest, the vehicle was thinking that it was consuming a lot. And as you are consuming a lot, the, um, the oil indicator also decreased because there is a beacon there that says, that can detect the amount of oil that uh, you have in your vehicle. But when you inject directly data in the CAN bus, it rejects the indicators and uh, decides to use the information that's receiving through the central unit. So even though our vehicle had plenty oil, plenty fuel, it decided to use the, that information and it continuously said that uh, it didn't have fuel. Well, afterwards we could recover uh, the, the car, we had to take it to to the auto repair shop, but we could manage to um, repair all the failures that we injected. This video also uh, shows a different data injection. So here we were injecting temperature in this case. We decreased temperature. This uh, video has been recorded in the GV offices in Madrid in July. It was very hot, but we could simulate that it was very cold. And when the car thinks that it is very cold, it turns off directly the conditioning air. So we were dying because of that. But it, anyway, it is true that from time to time the car comes, um, uh, tries to identify what's the temperature by asking the central unit of the vehicle and uh, restarts again the air conditioning. Another attack that we did was this central locking vision. Same thing as the same thing happened that uh, we've seen before with the V uh, MV attack. We did the same thing and we could open doors of cars through uh, Bluetooth or and uh, by sending the commands that you are seeing here. This information was sent to different devices and um, finally sent a signal to the guard so it could open the doors. This is a video of my colleague Igor, who is not the best actor in the world, but well, just with his phone, we could open up and close our th that car just by sending the commands that were necessary. 
This one is quite cool too. This attack implied playing with the park assistant, which is uh, the system that many cars have right now. Uh, so park assistant systems uh, look for a spot to park and uh, when and, and park automatically, which seems like a huge innovation. But if you have like 12, ca 12 cameras in a vehicle and uh, detection system is not that complicated. So when well, when the car is stopped, uh, this attack can move the wheel, the wheels and the of the car. But the thing is that the car must be stopped. So, so what we tried is that by disassembling the central unit that is under the wheel, which is the park assistant uh, central unit, we injected data for in order to do different things. First. We tried to uh, isolate the device that uh, sends the vehicle the signal that, the signal that it is stopped. Uh, I, I was very scared when I recorded this video. I, I was wearing a helmet. We have a colleague that is sending these commands via Bluetooth, Bluetooth because the car is on now. It has its own Bluetooth. And the API that we were using also had a Bluetooth. So it was very easy to connect to that car because this car, in fact, also has Wi-Fi. So if you have a car nearby, you can connect through the Wi-Fi and send the commands months. Other attacks that we've seen, even though they are not related to vulnerabilities in the car, are the ones related to GPS spoofing. Here we have our car, our nav navigator. So here we are in the middle of uh, the field. We are going to see it now. Okay, so we didn't leave the parking here, and we did this through the plate that you have on the bottom right. The problem of that is that is that the GPS network is not validated. If you are able to send a GPS signal, which is stronger to the satellite antennas that are all over the world, your cars, your car is going to connect to the strong one, there is not a list of authorized satellites that can send this GPS signal. And this is something that happened to us. And, uh, it, uh, and everything started to failure, brakes, uh, I don't know, thousands of things that started appearing on our screen and we couldn't uh, make it work uh, anymore. Uh, we tried to change the batteries, etc. But there was some uh, some failure in the ECU that we were not able to uh, solve. And so where are we going? So this is why we are having this picture of Charlie Theron, which was not completely useful, but I really like this picture too. So vehicles are being more and more connected, and we will reach to see the different the, the, the number of attacks of the type of, or the type of attacks that Charlie Theron does in the last movie. Of, Fast and Furious. She was able to control the vehicles and uh, make them attack uh, people or places. So she could overcome all the security measures of cars in order to control them and use them against the bad guys, or in this case, the good guys, which were Vin Diesel and his friends. So this is where we are going. We've been talking about smart cities. Uh, we've been talking about all of the signals that our vehicles are going to receive in order to manage uh, traffic To Audi, for example, has announced a system them, uh, and when uh, that is an, an the sign that uh, the signal that the others are going to receive are going to help them decide the best route in order to uh, not to go through all the uh, lightings that are going to be in red in the street. And well, I think that this is going to be great. Uh, but uh, and I'm going to love it, but in the end we are all going to have the same information. So something like that, the fact of having a light 
um, a traffic light sending information to cars is not that innovative because the traffic light is going to send information to the um, to the traffic uh, central offices and these offices will send this information to the manufacturers that are interested in hiring this this service and this image is just to show you the different vectors that we are we have in our cars we can access a car not just through the canvas canvas or the wi-fi we, we can access by doing gps spoofing spoofing so that a car can deviate and uh, can start uh, can deviate from the usual uh, road uh, also we are going to be able to access th through many other different uh, gates this is the local usb that we were using before and that had the driver we could also access through wi-fi access points as, as we've seen before sometimes you can con you can access uh, through different plane areas and you start receiving diff um, all types of information that you can use in order to do forensic analysis and uh, you are not going to need to uh, have the navigation on the navigation system on for example if you have a uh, sporting watch you see that it needs to be looking for a GPS signal for a while but if this doesn't happen in the vehicle because the vehicle is receiving and sending positioning information all the time all the time and how we can we protect ourselves as users well this depends on the status of the vehicles because in the end the vehicle is going to think about safety. We need to, I mean, we use the same word in Spanish for us, the seguridad is both safety and security, but in English they have the word safety in order to talk about the people within our car. And we have to take this into account, all of the risks that may affect safety. And this is why manufacturers need to pay attention and try to cover all these vulnerabilities. I mean, I may not care if the car stops or not, but if I'm running, I'm um, driving in a highway and the car suddenly stops and it has four people inside, well, that's a different thing. So we need to be aware of the status of the vehicle in order to make different decisions. And in GMB, we've done a firewall for vehicles. Firewalls, it's a firewall like the one that we can use in a laptop, uh, but for a vehicle, this is our first version, but we will have a second version that will be even cooler because it will hide the cables and wires that we, you can see there. And this firewall is going to inspect all of the parameters of the vehicle real time and it's going to distinguish what's um, good traffic versus attacks, and it's going to be able to filter it. The canvas is receiving about 60,000 messages per second, so uh, it is a little bit complex to manage all that information, but we are working on that. And well, this is it. Um, thank you very much for uh, uh, being here in my presentation. If you have any question, I will be glad to answer all of them. Good afternoon, Carlos. Um, I have a question regarding awareness. What's the perspective of manufacturers? They are starting to segment the different connections with, between ECUs, as you you are saying. But are they doing anything else, or is this as open as it seems? Well, there is a little bit of everything. There are manufacturers that are aware of this and that are training staff that are able to fight against cybersecurity risks. But, for example, here in Europe, I think that most manufacturers are quite aware and many of them have uh, purchased external cybersecurity comp companies to incorporate them. Uh, but it is true that timings are long. If you want to buy a car right now with ceramic break-ins, um, CR8, for example, of Audi, and since the brakes were generated in a laboratory and were tested against fatigue, etc., and were tested later on rally world championships, until from that point until someone buys a car with these brakes, maybe 
we can have a five, a five year period of time. So this is why it is complicated. Some te like the tests that uh, uh, with technology, they have to accelerate all of these testings because technology is moving very fast. But anyway, they are quite aware. They have all the integrated risk analysis and they are trying to put measures in order to solve that. So in a couple of years, I think that all the cars that will be sold will be more or less cyber secured. In fact, now in Europe, we have a new organism which is called Eurozip Car, which is in charge of that, checking cybersecurity of connected cars. And this has been a, actually a Spanish proposal. So I think that we are working in the right path. Maybe we are a little bit slow, but we are working in the right path. So thank you very much, Carlos. We don't have more time. Thank you so much for your interesting presentation. Please, a big round of applause.